And we are back, ladies, gentlemen, and MBs, for the start of our Valpo Beacon Breakdown. I'm your co-host, Diadem. I'm here with my co-host. Henry Speedy Killer Ninja. And I mean, back every two weeks, right? This time, skipping a bit of fall break. So obviously, teams getting back into the swing of things. Um, I know a lot of the students here, especially, have had like tests. We've had a ton of like work to get done before this yep. fall break. And then with esports combined, where you have a ton of just... Uh, reschedules and a ton of people who can't play or maybe are going out of town um these last couple of weeks have been a bit rough uh they've been a bit <laughs> hectic but uh, you got to give us credit we, we've been handling it pretty well right yeah, all things all things considered yep it's been hectic in and out of esports um yep. people going home homework midterms um reschedules for esports <laughs> is always a big uh contentious thing um so kind of messing up the flow a little bit um but we're back we're back locked in um and a lot of exciting things to talk about today um so for today's show we got uh obviously the gleck and the necc recapping the past two weeks looking forward at the schedule as some of those playoffs are coming up uh pretty soon as well um we got an exciting uh announcement a little bit for tomorrow go over the standings watch some clips um and yeah kind of just catch up so how was your fall break i mean it was nice, right? Like, yeah, I was laughing a ton about having like the assignments and grades. I definitely felt that um, I had the four tests due right before fall break. So shout out to the engineering department. Um, I'm just happy to have them finished though, right? And be able yeah. to get back with the team. Esports is definitely one of those things, especially here where it's like, I get to kind of forget about that for a little bit yeah. and come here and compete with the team. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, for fall break, um, I went home to Cleveland, Ohio. Um, hey, it's always weird kind of going home because um, my parents are like empty nesters. So when I come home, like the first thing they do is, you know, make me food. You know, I'm <laughs> sitting on the recliner watching TV and I come back here and it's boom, boom, boom. Got to do this, <laughs> that. Got homework, got games, got streams, meetings, all this stuff. So like getting back into it is always like brutal on that yep. Monday coming back. Um, I know like spring break and winter break are going to be the same way, just 10 times worse. Um, but yeah, I had a good relaxing break. Uh, also turned 24. So hey. I'm now officially in my mid twenties. Uh, so Saturday night had a little family dinner, ribeye steak. Um, yeah, good time. Uh, good to relax, hang out, things like that. Um, but yeah, we're back in full swing. And speaking of that, we will uh, take a peek at our little uh, land tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, um, Valpo Smash team and Valpo League of Legends teams will be traveling to Manchester to play LAN in person, right? Obviously, first game is going to be our Valpo Smash team taking them on at 11 a.m., but then an hour after, just a tiny bit staggered, right? Our League of Legends team, you know, yours included, uh, will be taking on their uh, League of Legends team at 12 o'clock. And I mean, it's really competitive, right? Both of these teams are extremely strong. Um, yep. I know that, especially at least from a league perspective, we've been prepping for these guys for a minute. Um, coming off of the fall break as well, we've been catching back into the swing, right? Picked up picked up a win in the NECC, so we are rolling into the season. Um, we're pretty on fire right now, so I'm excited for this game. Definitely no joke. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun just traveling in person to be able to have a little bit of competition. Yeah, we'll kind of look at the standings of the schedule in a minute, but um, so their Smash teams five and zero, our Smash teams four and one, and then I believe both league teams are three and two. Yep. Um, so I mean it's going to be highly competitive, good matches. Um, they're great opponents. Obviously, I've been going back and forth with them for several years now, and also uh, I do want to give a shout out to Manchester for that graphic. Been working on all the other graphics, so yeah. <laughs> no, it's nice to have a little bit of a <laughs> little bit of uh, work off your back, which is cool. Um, but now we're going to look at the program-wide standings here. So we're going to start out with the Great Lakes Esports Conference. League of Legends, 3-2, and two, Varsity Smash, 4-1. and one. Moving over to the NECC, League of Legends, 3-1 and one with that victory we had this week. Academy Smash has had some really tough uh, Varsity team opponents. Uh, has not been able to find their first win yet. Rocket League is firing on all cylinders, 4-0. and oh. And then Varsity and Academy Overwatch are 2-1. and one. So... Yeah, definitely. No, I mean, um, we've been seeing a lot of success, right? Obviously, um, had a lot of strong opponents, especially coming in early. But uh, biggest outstander that we've had is our Rocket League team. Uh, they are just killing it right now, right? Yeah. Especially with, uh, we have a new pickup with Luck, right? With the returning people as well. You know, the coach still coming back. Um, Rocket League has just really, really been taking names here. And I, yep. I appreciate it. It's always fun to watch. 
Another quick update too. We had um, our new head coach, Bryce Jones for yep. Overwatch start this week uh, with both Overwatch teams um, winning so far this week and both of them have another game tonight. We kind of talked about the reschedules with the fall break. So both Varsity Academy Overwatch had two games this week and they both have won their first one so far. Yep. Um, so, so far undefeated, untarnished yeah. record. Um, and obviously Bryce coming in with four championships as a previous coach. Okay. Um, so I know he has high expectations for the team and we are so um, thrilled to have him back. Definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he just, he brings that kind of energy to, to the team as well of success, right? Like yep. obviously it's, it's one thing to be positive. It's one thing to be helpful, but uh, Bryce is a decorated coach, especially here at Valpo. So being able to have somebody with a little bit of hardware come in, um, kind of take that positive energy, especially, you know, early season starting to move into mid season now, right. Being able to just catch up in stride and immediately coming out with a couple of demanding wins as well. Yep. Really love to see it. So super excited. Obviously we talked about the reschedule. So um, one of the games up in the air today, but we do have the stream at least confirmed to varsity overwatch at eight o'clock. So we have a lot going on, which uh, should be moving pretty quickly yeah. here. I can't hype up Bryce enough. Uh, I had coffee with him this morning. because He is in <laughs> town this week. Um, and not only is he like super decorated and like a great coach for like in-game success, uh, but one of the things we talked about is, you know, his priorities, his philosophy, um, it, the player always comes first. It's, it's about the person. Um, and then, you know, we talk about academics, getting graduation is always the goal with Falpo U Sports. Um, and then it's in-game play. So, I mean, he's really got his philosophy, his priorities straight. Um, but yeah, really, really excited to have him back. Um, but next, we actually did have our media day come back, so we will take a peek at our uh, rosters real quick, put some faces to some names. Woo-hoo! So here Woo-hoo! is our League of Legends team. As you can see, Diadem looking good there. Um, it's just a just a couple of beautiful people right there. I can't yeah. I can't complain. I can't. Complain. First team, all good looks for Valpo U Sports <laughs> here. <laughs> um, but dreadful. Top lane, Super Bear in the jungle, Jakimbo uh, in the mid lane, and then the Law as support. And we will move to our Varsity Overwatch team. Fusic yep, yep. on tank, Wit there, and Atlas on DPS. Oh, boy. I, it- Sam always goes after me for butchering this, but it's Karakuki. I, Kirakuki. Don't look at me. <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> um, but we'll go with Sam for now yep. um, on support. And then CQ9. Uh there is support as well. Yep. And then next, uh, Rocket League team who has been killing it this year. Obliviox, Jank, and Luck. And Academy Overwatch. We got Zachar on tank. Eleanor Moen as DPS. Air J, NH Cool Stuff on support. And then we actually do not have the Smash one yet because some people didn't come to Picture Day. And there's also like... There's no like true, those are the starting rosters, not the yep. entire roster. And there's no yes, like true yes. starting roster for Smash. And even if we had one, I don't know if I don't show that on a stream, like before the game. Yep. Um, makes sense. So I didn't finish up that graphic. Like I said, we got them this week. Hey, I so, mean, all I'm saying is Valpo Esports, number one uh, most photogenic <laughs> team that we have in the league. I, I guarantee yeah. you that. That or our camera's really nice. I think it's both. Yeah. But. Shout out to Markom <laughs> for sure, too, yep. uh, yeah, for getting yeah, those yeah. pictures in. Um, but I believe next we have, oh, oh boy. Oh boy, Blake. Oh, Our fantasy uh, football hey, standings update. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You notice I was at eight last time. I picked up my first win last week. Standing ovation for me. Standing ovation for me. I love it so much. Um, You can see uh, Speedy Kill Ninja there in the five slot dropping down <laughs> to three and three, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Jakimbo once again leading the way. Coach Jim as well at that five and one. Thankfully, Justin lost a game because he's just dominant and everything. Yep. Taking a look at this week's matchups, we got myself versus uh, Karma, Jakimbo versus Coach Jim. Oh, that's going to be a good matchup yeah. here. Looking mm-hmm. at the percentages, of course, it is a little earlier in the week. Um, did have Thursday night football, maybe some final roster adjustments, but so far leading the way of Jakimbo. We got Vortic versus uh, Ricky. And then lastly, uh, Diadem or Dikembe slash yep. Blake <laughs> uh, versus Super Bear. So hey. a little league matchup there. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is my two tight ends got off injury reserve and we won our first game. I, I think Chance has something to worry about because I actually have players this time. Half my roster isn't out. So you know what? I'll take it. Um, 
I still can't get over the fact I drafted Christian McCaffrey first and he <laughs> went on injury reserve immediately. So, you know what? It happens. It happens. Yep. But uh, first, we're going to look at our Varsity Super Smash Bros. schedule. As you can see, 4-0. So I believe we have not had any games happen um, since our last break. So no yeah. new updates there, but you can see Manchester, Bethel, Illinois, Wesleyan, and all of it. So some tough matches coming up for sure. Next, we got Varsity League of Legends. Um, they are the only team competing in two conferences actively right now. So um, they had the Olivet game was uh, that Saturday during break, and then the UBC game as well in the NECC. So in that game, you guys looked really good, um, yeah. which, you know, had some bumps in the road uh, the week prior. So I was really glad. Uh, I think you guys are firing on all cylinders. Any thoughts on uh, the remaining schedule here? Yeah, I mean, um, that's kind of the story of it was we – Took those uh, two losses, one to iTech, one to um, University of Alberta. And then... Um, it, there we go. See you a little better now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we, we took those two losses, and it was kind of an issue where we had to sit back and reevaluate kind of how we wanted to draft, how we wanted to play around. Because, you know, we are still picking up things, right? Obviously, we are halfway through this season, right? We're, we're gearing to go now. So after picking up those last couple of wins, um, we definitely feel like we've hit a stride again, and we've kind of found the success that we were looking for, um, especially when we started the season, right? We were very confident going into the season, hit a couple of bumps, but we're back to the spot that we want to be at. And especially, you know, hitting that stride right before we go into land, uh, our team's really excited to play. We feel great. Yep. Next, going to be getting into the Rocket League schedule, as you see, uh, has basically played like this huge Big Ten school schedule, University of Michigan, Illinois, Washington University, University of Houston at Dallas. Um, this big match on the schedule for them is going to be that uh, November 7th match for Southwestern Oklahoma State, University of Blue. Both teams um, are undefeated right now and kind of seems like they're destined to clash uh, to fight over that number one seed. <laughs> Of course, got to get through these uh, two games or Tarleton State and uh, Michigan Flint before that. Um, but, I mean, even their score lines, too. Uh, University of Michigan JV2, who we 3 2 um, has won every other game they've played. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, 3 look looking great. I mean, the, this team is on fire. Yep, definitely. Varsity Overwatch. So, had the reverse sweep week one. Um, and then week three... I forget if they got, if they were about to reverse sweep or if they got reverse swept, um, but unfortunately a close game five loss in that uh, OCU team, very strong team in their conference. Um, so I know Coach Bryce is feeling very confident about their uh, schedule for the last uh, remaining um, for this season. But yeah, had a really good game last night, as you can see there. And with that being said, we will move into the Academy Overwatch schedule. Um, started off with a tough game against Saginaw Valley, uh, but I mean, since then has looked so much better. They've been improving so much week after week, um, and hopefully we'll get to see them play again tonight against DePaul University Gold. And I believe this is our last one, our Academy Smash team versus University of Cumberland's Akron, Thomas Moore. Um, Thomas Moore, they're looking a lot better. It seemed like a closer uh, kind of skill level, um, but unfortunately haven't been able to find a win yet. So I'm interested in matches coming up um, versus Indiana Tech um, is actually a Great Lakes Esports Conference school, um, and so is Defiance, and so is Mount Vernon. Or Defiance was previous Gleck. Um, but a lot of schools that our varsity team has played throughout the years. So excited to kind of see how those teams stack up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, although you don't see, uh, obviously, the success in the score lines specifically, right? Knowing that these teams, you know, are, are varsity competition and we're being able to get that uh, kind of experience on the academy level is so huge especially just for player development so there's a lot of great things to take from that especially um and just looking at the lineup as well going forward uh i'm excited to see how academy overwatch wants to kind of rock yeah um every team other than academy smash is about above 500 right now i yep. mean um, that academy smash team has been playing pretty much only varsity teams. Yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the teams overall have been performing really well. I'm really excited 
with those results. Um, but next we will be getting into, um, we've been, you know, taking these videos, these fun little personality inside look at the team. Um, so we posted one to social media a couple weeks ago, but we're going to take a look at that one um, real quick here. Okay, what are your pregame rituals or superstitions? My pregame ritual is to bring my little Piplup plushie next to me and to have it watch me during the game to make sure I'm performing well. The Taco Bell buff is real. Um, I love going to Taco Bell before the game. Pick up like a Nachos Bell Grande or, you know, just slam a whole box. It, and it gives you a buff for the game and you play better. It's a real thing. Do you have any pregame rituals or superstitions? Uh, yeah, drinking copious amounts of caffeine. I make sure I'm always wearing earrings and I have my three rings on. And then I always put on Spotify and listen during a draft. Yeah, so whenever I play, I find that I play better if I sit in a specific way. So I have a certain way that I have to sit, otherwise I'll play worse. <laughs> Do you have any pregame rituals or superstitions? Um, I mean, it's kind of virtual. Uh, I always make sure I have a full bottle of water, so I have to go refill this. Um, and then I always just make sure that I'm listening to music, uh, some kind, doesn't really matter what, just always make sure I'm ready. Yeah, I usually like to try to stay confident before the match, so that I can actually not feel nervous going into the match. And I can feel the best that I can possibly be. Uh, besides me just cracking my fingers, like, I'm not gonna lie, I really don't practice like that. I just, just a natural skill, I guess. I mean, Get good, I guess. <laughs> so, um, that last one is really funny. But just, just, just get good, <laughs> just get good. I'm just, I love it. Just better, I guess. Yep. Um, the one that I relate to the most uh, is definitely Wes's. I have to sit in a very specific way um, when I play. Um, how about you? Other than yours? Um, I mean, obviously I, I mentioned I, I it, but yours. Uh, no, honestly, I I, I, I do, do that the same. same. Um, I literally, I sit back and I lean yeah, in the chair I, I like, this. Back like this. Yeah, it's, it's like, like uh, uh, there's a streamer named, named Tyler one, one that likes to do this, this where he plays up here and everything else. else he's just controlling the mouse and keyboard, keyboard from up here. And sometimes I feel like that, like I'll, I'll go quiet in game and I just, I feel like I'm puppeteering my keyboard rather than actually playing on it. It feels great. Yeah. Um, for me, I, they called the JDM, the CSGO player who played like, <laughs> yeah, all the way yep. lean back. Um, only difference is they always have their monitors like right on yeah. their face, basically. Um, but yeah, and shout out to Simon for a little health and wellness, getting that yep. uh, water in. Um, the, the, the one, one like, like healthy nope. tip out of all of them, because yeah, we, so, had, we had yeah. Simon who was like, I need to drink a full thing of water. I need to stay hydrated. And then we had the full Nachos Bel Grande uh, <laughs> box pack that Chance was and, giving. Uh, Copious amounts of caffeine. Yep, yeah, copious yeah. amounts of caffeine. Uh, the league team has kind of an issue. Uh, my bad. <laughs> our fault. Our fault. But it's all right. You gotta yeah. love it. Um, well, next, you know, we talked about the games, the results, but we're actually going to take an inside look um, at uh, some of those games, some of those highlights from the games. So we will take a step back as we uh, watch this uh, video. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week three of Beacon Breakdown Clips. I'm getting these turrets like it's still so huge. And you see Jakimbo um, with that gold lead put into work. That's absolutely chunky down. We are gonna see that Galley does get caught up a little bit. We are gonna see the Alley does throw the out the off, but it was not enough to save the Galio. Um Sintra does alt the J4 and um, Aatrox is able to knock down the Galio, making this a 3-0 um, kills for Valpo and make him just about even in gold as Ziggs. However, with plating, Ziggs is still up right around 400 gold. Yeah, still see that absolutely massive lead um, in the solo lanes in the jungle as well. As we do see Dreadful <laughs> with the solo bolo, ulting, flashing, getting that... I mean, he loves doing that third Q flash just to kind of secure the kill there. Uh, but he, I mean, he is dominated. Yeah, he's gonna ult, but gonna have to jump out there. Kimba does have to be careful here, as he is gonna as he is gonna get shut down. Super Bear is gonna go in here, trying to find trying to find the purchase to find anything, not be able to find anything. But dreadful with the TP is able to shut down the team with a triple kill, going to dreadful and a reverse ace, sassy and um, shield power. And because of that, you're gonna see that the stuns that are extremely helpful for um, UBC Jade are not going to be able to find purchase 
Dreadful is absolutely chunking down um, Tom Kench. DM is able to get another kill as we see DM on an acid rampage with the Bard throwing down the ultimate. The Ziggs all trying to find trying to find somebody. DM is on a triple kill and not being able to doesn't look like he's gonna be able to find a fourth. In comes the Lucio here. Looking for a boop. Finds the Bastion in oh, wow. in conjunction with the Arissa Spear. Finds some great kills there. I just saw everyone flying off and <laughs> off of the map there. Um, the yep. with a great start getting the first point take. So now, now on the Ram cast, gonna have a little bit more of long range pressure. So gonna have to be a little more cautious here. And there we go. Like, I like how he jumps when he uses Blade Beam sometimes, so it doesn't trade with the Coral Flame. Oh! oh the finishing touch! Big time stock there by AAG. Oh, man. Put the ball towards University of Houston, Dallas' goal. Jake gonna center it. Oblivious just misses on that opportunity minute left this one goal is not enough cushion that Valpo can feel comfortable yet Rocket League is such a fast-paced game a lot of goals can happen very quickly with one minute remaining Valpo up one looking for another opportunity and great goal by Jank really like how he kind of almost fake stalled out this um, did it hit it did not hit the ball Free pass up the middle just a tad too high for Jank and that's going to be a goal for Obliviex. Another assist by Jank, looking like Steve Nash out here. I mean, they're they're just setting the ball up in the middle, giving Valpo the opportunity to find the goal. The ball's got to hit the ground still, and we are in overtime of Game Three. I mean, hats off, regardless of the result here, to University of Houston at Dallas, able to persevere through that disconnect um, and hold on three v two. But Valpo. With some aggression off the kickoff, and Luck is going to put the punctuation on the series as they win game three, two to one. Yeah, great week of clips for sure. Um, Luck with that overtime goal there, uh, but a lot of great plays. Uh, Jacob snip snipping his way on that Gwen. Um, we had AAG with a nice finishing touch there, uh, but a lot of success, a lot of great games. Um, I'm honestly not sure if we lost. I think that only game we lost at all of those was that Smash game. Yep. Um, the past two weeks we've been on fire. Um, you did also hear me commentating in a lot of those clips with the fall break with midterms. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. many casters. Uh, the casters have been busy. So it's it's, it's been a bit rough. Um, <laughs> I've I've been definitely a bit sad not being able to come to the caster booth. So I'm happy to be here for the breakdown, which is nice. It's always a always a nice little respite. But I think that's going to do it uh, for us here today. Um, we got the next Beacon Breakdown bi-weekly on Friday. So we'll see you guys in two weeks. Make sure you stay tuned on social media for that uh, Manchester stream as well. Really excited for that trip tomorrow. Um, and then tonight, we got two Overwatch games, one at 6.30 and one at 8. Um, so yeah, any uh, kind of final thoughts? No, um, I mean, I'm happy to be back for fall break. Uh kicking it in gear and as we approach kind of the final end of our season right you know we've crossed that midpoint it's it's time to lock in yeah playoffs are coming up um but yeah thank you guys so much for the support and we will see you guys later tonight for our overwatch good one